Now that we've downloaded Codeception, the next thing that we need to do is actually install it. So there's a quick start guide available on Codeception.com, which is just here. This is the page we're on. So you can see we've done the download piece and the next thing we need to do is actually just do the bootstrap element. So bootstrap in this case doesn't refer to the Twitter bootstrap stuff. Completely different. It's just actually in effectively installing or bootstrapping Codeception into our environment. So there's this command here, but if I actually copy that, it's, it's not going to work for us. So we can see at the moment, as I mentioned, um, the way that I work is using VMware remotely. Um, and currently, it takes ages when I do the vendor download. So it's, it's still downloading all the, the, the new stuff that we've just downloaded using the Composer install. But you can see that we've got our Codeception folder. Then inside that, there's another Codeception folder. And in there is this Codecept file that it's talking about just here. And then after that, we need to do the bootstrap. So our path is going to be vendor, Codeception, Codeception, Codecept, and then bootstrap. So let's just type that in. So it's PHP, vendor, Codeception, Codeception, Codecept, and then bootstrap. And there we go. It's basically done our bootstrap. And we now have some additional directories. So as you can see here, we just close that. We don't have a test file, a test directory, nor do we have a codeception.yaml, or I think it's a codecept.yaml. And we can see here now, if we do that's minus LA, we can see we have a codeception.yaml, sorry, codeception.yaml, and we also have a tests directory that it's created for us. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and download those directories as well, but you can see that it's basically telling us the structure that it's created for us there. So I'm going to download them, and the next video we will be looking at what's in those files and what we can do with them.